Hi everyone and welcome again to the Front Row Media Podcast. This is Season 1, Episode 8, shot in Workshop 17 in Cliff Street. Um, again, another exciting guest and I think for this one it's going to be a part of like a, a student series where we kind of like speak to fashion creatives who are also maybe students running businesses. Um, so I actually don't want to introduce the guest myself or hand it over to herself. Um, her name is Mishka Pasando, and she runs um, an online thrift store called A Pre Love Thrift. Um, but yeah, so maybe just speak about who you are, um, where you're from, how old you are, mm-hmm. and yeah, what you really like to do. Um, so my name is Mishka Basan. I'm f- originally from East London, but I've been living in Cape Town for the past six years or so. Mm. Um, I'm 20 years old, and yeah, I'm a full time student at UCT, and I run, I'm the owner and founder of another Pre Love Thrift. Dude, like, I actually didn't know a lot about you. <laughs> you know, did you say you UCT as well? Yeah. UCT. Oh, fantastic. Um, so I think maybe then this is kind of like going to be a more of an in-depth episode where I get to learn a lot about you mm-hmm. and your business mm-hmm. and everyone as well. Okay. Um, so maybe let's start it off at the beginning. So okay. you said you, you run a brand, co- a business called pre Thrift. Another pre Thrift, yeah. Yeah, another yeah. pre Thrift. So essentially, like, what is that? Maybe talk us through that um, and maybe, like, just in, like, a brief summary because mm. we'll unpack it, I think, as the episode continues more. So I wanted to... Obviously, like, I didn't start this idea of a whole Instagram thrift page. Yeah. Um, but I, and I got a lot of inspiration from other, other thrift accounts. Sure. Um, Because I found the concept, like, really cool, you know, like, uh, being able to, to source items from thrift stores and then, like, create them, like, model them as your own. Yeah. Um, pose them off as, like, you know, the way you would prefer. Curate and the whole vibe. Yeah, create yeah. the whole vibe, yeah. Um, and, like, just use that as content for an instagram page which mm. I, I yeah like it just blew my mind so i was like yes i have to get in on this yeah um and yeah it's just it's a really it's been an amazing journey and it's you know, it's taught me a lot it's mm. taught me how to balance my my school life and you know running a, yeah. a small business um so yeah it's just which i can imagine because i mean you're literally only in second year right second year, yeah and i think you've been again like you i think you, you corrected me yesterday when you said like you've been running your business actually since, since September last, last, last year. year. Yeah, so you actually started it like when you were in your first year. Mm-hmm, I did. Um, Quite so a kind of this. <laughs> but yeah. You know, yeah. And I think it's dope because like I, m- personally, like I want to find out more about that, but I'll, I'll ask a bit later on. So how do you maybe like um, get into fashion? I how think more I than anything. Fashion? Yeah. So what are you actually studying at UCT? And then how do you maybe like get into fashion out of maybe your personal interest? So I'm studying a BA in yeah. um, sociology and media and writing. Oh, yeah. And then I also do gender studies, which I actually, I wanted to major in that. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's yeah. a whole bunch of technical <laughs> issues. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And then what was the other question? How? Yeah. So essentially like um, you're studying and how did you get into fashion? How would I get into fashion? How, like how did you? Like how did you oh, introduce to it? Like the idea of it? Social media, oh social yeah. media is playing yeah. like a huge, huge, huge role in that. Same for me because a lot of people like kind of like have like family like heritage mm. in fashion, like yeah. their dads or uncles or uh-huh. someone within it in the lineage. I also wasn't the same. I kind of like saw this like on like more like Instagram, yeah, yeah. more and more than anything, and I kind of yeah. like found my way and got into it, it's, like yeah, research because, I mean, and like, stuff. We spend so much time online, and yeah. um, if we act once once we actually sit down and think about how much we influence by what we see mm. and who we see in certain garments and stuff, it's it's crazy. Like yeah. my aunt though, um, with when you spoke about the whole heritage thing, yeah. she's my uncle's wife, my my mom's brother's wife. Mm-hmm. Um, she's been thrifting for years. Like she buys from vintage cool. stores online, and she lives in East London, so cool. they don't have a lot of yeah. stuff there. So she yeah. she be shipping like from from the one down the road. She just orders 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 ships it's just oh so it's the life that i want to live yeah. you know okay so you so i'm understanding that you kind of then were like exposed to it to a certain yeah, extent not like necessarily like fashion but like i've always been told that my style is similar to hers like you know with the chunky cool. shoes and yeah yeah because my family is really like yeah plain janes kind cool. of thing so she's the only person who i've really like seen and sure. been exposed to in my family who is yeah similar you know okay cool. yeah so then um how then does the, the whole transition work? So you said that you've been staying in Cape Town for the past six years. Yes. So you were in East London then for, I'm pretty sure, yeah. a good chunk of your life. Yeah, yeah. How's that been from like a, 
stylistic perspective as well. I mean, there's very different aesthetics sure. East London and sure. Cape Town. So Huge I can, I can imagine like when you moved here, yeah. like when you actually saw people and like how relaxed also the clothes can be, yeah. like skaters for the first time. Can I please, no, can I please <laughs> tell you like, yeah. me in East London, you're yeah. not looking at the same person. Like oh, yeah. I was, oh, it was awful. I get you. I was the just worst. Like, like no one was oh. worse than me. But I yeah, g- yeah, it was bad. I feel you. I think it's just, it depends on what you're exposed to. If I was in, in East London now, I probably, obviously, I wouldn't be the same person I yeah. am today. Yeah. Um, and moving to Cape Town has really just, like, shifted my perspective and shifted how I developed. Mm. Because, I mean, I moved here halfway through grade eight. I was 14. So, yeah. I w- like, I spent my whole teenage, all my teenage years here, which is, yeah, that's just shaped me. I feel you. And then, so, moving here, I'm assuming then you kind of, like, assimilated the culture Mm. And then, like, I'm sure also fashion can maybe become your gateway in terms of meeting the community, which is probably, like, your friends right yeah, now, yeah. if I'm not correct. Yeah, most of my friends are, like, models. Oh, yeah. Some of my friends are models. Like, some of my friends, they have their own businesses. They're all yeah. doing something, you know? Yeah. Um, and, yeah. So I've noticed that. Like, I've noticed um, that um, you guys all kind of, like, really, like, know each other. Yeah, we you do. Know? We do. And especially, like, not really, like, know each other from, like, a very fickle perspective. Like, mm. just know of each other. Yeah. But know, like... Like or in like tune of like yes. what people do, like yes. support each other's businesses mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And I think that's super dope. Like I know, yeah. From like it's a really, it's a really like the yeah. communities like this. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like it's kind of like I'm I'm, I'm low key obsessed with it. Like even seeing it from the side, purely because I'm just like it's such, it shows like what a dope place fashion like is right now and where it's gonna be as mm-hmm. well in the future, especially like locally. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yes. saying? So it's kind of like very, very dope to see how also intertwined it is yeah. with um, going out, like youth culture, like parties and shit like that. She used to be so conservative, like... I know, Yeah, I know. like quite Everything boring. It's like it's really different now. Yeah. Cool. So I think l- let's hone in maybe now on... So we understand maybe your journey, your past, how you get into it. Let's talk about another pre-love thrift, mm-hmm. right? Um, how does it actually work? Maybe break down what an online thrift store is to a layman who kind of doesn't know like how it actually okay. works. So I go sourcing. I source garments, um, whether that be like clothing items, shoes, accessories, bags, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, books. Depending on like what the book is, if it's like yep. a quite popular book and everybody the books wants, are so like Instagram some vintage, like like some fire. old 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 yeah. style books and um, some deco pieces as yeah. well. Um, so I source those. I then if if it needs to be refurbished, I refurbish it um, sure. to the best of my ability, <laughs> and then I photograph it, I wash it, steam it, the whole shebang, and yeah. then I photograph it, and then advertise it on my page, post right. it like that, yeah. So essentially, you you do all of that. Yeah, I do all of that. I was gonna ask, like, it was well, one of the questions was essentially like, I thought maybe like someone helped you. No, well, I can't drive at the moment, which yeah. is why my uncle is here. Yeah. Um, my uncle he drives me to oh, yeah. charity shops, but I got cool. my learners. Thank yeah. thank God, Shout I got my learners out. like almost a month ago. Shout um, out. and I need to start learning how to drive so that. But oh, yeah. once I do that, and once yeah. I can, I do mean, this, you're twenty. <laughs> please, please. Yo, I'm like, so, I'm, I'm, I'm contextualizing so, it. I'm, yo, I'm contextualizing sure. it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, but, um, and you're doing a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, cool. So, chat to us then a bit more about, cool, the sourcing bit. Mm-hmm. Um, sourcing then, since I've seen your page, right? And I've seen, like, how you curated and the aesthetics, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, well, for me, uh, me understanding it, mm-hmm. right? Is ca- I kind of like see, for example, like the taste levels, like what you're inspired by, like how you, it's not just like, just you don't just put product down and just like take photos. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So where does that all like come from? Because you kind of do like a, a lot. Yeah. Like a jack of, jack of all trades mm-hmm. essentially with your business. So you being able to source, you being able to steam and to wash and you being able to take photos, apply that aesthetic, you being able to distribute the clothes mm-hmm. as well. Like, I won't say where you learn all of that, but like, <laughs> I think it's not easy stuff to be able to do. So how do you learn to how to like kind of do all of that? When and it also comes, apply that yeah. touch? When it comes to what I'm buying, which is also like, that's the most important. Well, that's one of the most, like the key concepts or the key like features of my business is yeah. what I buy. And um, so cause that's, that's, that's what I provide for the customer. Mm. So I'm most inspired by like what I see trending, like, I'm, I have Pinterest, obviously. I use that. Yeah. Um, I, I make sure to engage with my customers. Like, Instagram stories exist. Like, oh, yeah. polls, questions. Like, what right. are you looking for? I ask so many, I ask 
almost every time before I go sourcing, mm-hmm. what are you looking for? Please like include your size I so that if I find that. this, like it's it's personal, mm. you know. I if I buy this, I'm like, oh my word! I didn't remember this girl DM me. She said that she wanted this. Yeah. I need to DM her and be like, yo, I found this today. Yeah. I'm gonna post it. If you're interested, just let me know. You know what I mean? That's dope. That's yeah. such a personal way. You, you, you know, you kind of like it's a it's a mix of thrifting, but also like personal, personal shopping, shopping as yeah. well. It's, like it's 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 so it it provides me so much joy. I don't yeah. I, I don't even know how to explain it, but like being able to shop for someone and be like I found what you wanted and yeah. then being so happy and like getting it and being happy about it oh. yeah that's why I do it it's so crazy like cause me understanding this mm. more it's it's a lot of styling as well yeah um, because like again I said you have to apply your taste level you're not mm. just providing pre found product yeah. yeah it's kind of also like I'm about to go do this like, like serving li- through everything yeah like let me know what you guys and want that and, yeah. And, uh, yeah so have you ever maybe Cons- is, is styling is something which you have a, like a close relationship with have you ever like maybe thought considered it as a as a, a thing to do or yes, actually. is it just something um, which for example you find easy to do as like yeah it's 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 nice to like ob- like there are some businesses where they they style their garments like they wear it and they take photos in it i personally i don't know like i don't know i don't know yeah. how i feel about that like i love seeing an outfit put together but I feel like giving someone an, a piece of clothing like on a hanger it allows them to see themselves in that because how it's going to look on me doesn't isn't how it's going to look on you, right. you know? And what I buy isn't necessarily always my size either. Yeah. I'm not trying to like take a size 20 pants and wrap it around my waist, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think th- that's that should be open to you to, mm. to see. I feel you. Yeah. So then that must essentially mean like, wanting or like a, just a, a strong desire for like a personal relationship with your clothes mm. more than anything mm. and i kind of maybe also wanted to understand your relationship with circularity and sustainability mm. um and more than anything purely because um it's something which i find like gen z specifically mm. um because i think we're both gen z but i'm more like the later older gen z mm. and you're kind of like more like the very like new young gen z and there's essentially like a very close relationship which like the younger gen z have with sustainability yeah um especially like as seeing it as more of like a requirement Mm. and more of something which you to do in everyday life yeah yeah Yeah. so what's your relationship with that um and then because of course we see that the online thrift store Mm. and that but your personal beliefs yeah so for you like i think yeah Okay, well, when it comes to sustainability and thrifting specifically, it's definitely yeah. a privilege, and not everybody can just do it, you know. Yeah. Um, I th- I see like people are always pushing the agenda of like you need to thrift, you you have to thrift, but not not everyone has access to that. Um, which is why I think that having an online business where anyone with an Instagram account can find find me, find That's other businesses like mine, th- they can they have the access to that, you know. It right. makes it easier instead of you know getting on getting. <coughs> your way all the way from your home all the way to a thrift store charity shop you know yeah. that kind of thing um but it is a privilege like not everybody can do it and i think that's okay mm. like everyone ha- like to the best of your ability if your heart is in the right place and your mind is in the right place then you're doing your best yeah you know yeah but personally like so say i started thrifting the first item of clothing i thrifted i still have it it's yeah. my favorite jeans oh, i thrifted yeah. it in like 2018 i think yeah yeah, I was still in high school. I went to Thrift Fest. You know Thrift Fest? No. Nah. Thrift, oh, you sh- uh, it's actually happening <coughs> tomorrow. Is it in East London or no, Cape Town? No, it's here, it's here. Thrift Fest, yeah. Um, the first one I went to was in at the Ubuntu Novalis Institute in Weinberg. Okay. Yeah. It's a whole what bunch of... What happens at the Thrift Fest? Sounds so interesting. No, like. it's so cool. Like, there are a whole bunch of stalls and, like, rails of clothing, thrifted yeah. clothing, and you just, like, go there, you buy, you... you like it's cash and everything. Buy sell trade. That's yeah. what you guys. Li- yeah, and, and if I yeah. want to do, which I, I have before, you I can get my stock together and I can buy a store See. and then I can yeah. sell. Where does it actually happen? It happens all over there. They have one in Change Town mm-hmm. in Obs. They have in well, well, the one tomorrow. The one tomorrow. Oh, the one tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, the one tomorrow. The one tomorrow is in Weinberg. It's the, okay, one, the first one I went to. Oh yeah. It's just happening. It's my favorite one. I think I want to go. I didn't want to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you said that that was like the, the first. What is your f- the first? Like said it's a pair of jeans. It's a pair of jeans. Yeah. Is it like a like a Levi's like a, a brand? It's a Wrangler. Wrangler. Oh yeah. Wrangler jeans. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so pretty. Like th- I we- I still wear it. Yeah. I still wear it. I think the first piece because I still have mine mm. as well. Mm. 
I what like the, the first, it was like a, a denim jacket. Like a, a denim jacket with like the tassels like at the back. You see, no, that's like a timeless piece that you can hold on to until yeah. you're like. I don't even wear that shit sometimes. Yeah, really? Just look yeah. at it. Yeah. <coughs> like I literally just have it, just wake up and just look at it. I'm mm. like, yo. It's just that I, beautiful. I bought that. Yeah, that you was my introduction. That. that was my first cap. And yeah, it's like, it's kind of like, a s- not not the jeans itself, but like where I started. It's It, it meant a lot. Yeah, it means a lot. Yeah, it's, it's kind of started this whole thing, my interest in thrifting. Because mm. I bought, I bought the jeans. I went to thrift fest, and I was like, oh my word, this is so cool. But then yeah. I was like, oh my word, matric, you know, high school. I don't have time like to do all of that. Yeah. And then university, as much as it is a lot more work, you have a lot more free time. Mm. When you aren't working, you you don't have like compulsory classes to go to, kind of thing. Yeah. And especially because of COVID, COVID is like one of the reasons why um, online selling. Yeah. Was a, like it was able to become promoted and stuff, yeah. um, and a lot more popular. Definitely because people well, you know, online, firstly, yeah. that's how you're buying your stuff. And s- but like most importantly, people are just spending time on their yeah. phones, on Instagram, on social media. That's where they're seeing stuff, you know. So I yeah, think that's it's so dope purely because I know, like, like look at looking for example at Africa, right? As like an mm. example of a demographic, is I agree with you in terms of like I mean we were speaking about this a lot in, in, in fashion school last year. Mm. <clears throat> because like that was like a, a, a rare year where like something like that could happen mm. and it's impact on the industry you know like with for example it's negative impact on retail um and people shopping more online for example and the emergence of like direct to con- direct to consumer like um businesses mm. you know like independent brands and i think more than anything in a country for example like south africa it's two-sided because people have the propensity rather than to move online like, because all you need is, like, Wi-Fi, really. Mm. But then, like, people also have, like, um, they don't want to, like, send out really, like, their car details and something yeah. that sensitive, yeah. like, yeah. online. But if, for example, it's uh, I just, like, EFT, for example, yeah. or mm. it's something which is way more, like, apt for, mm. like, our nature, yeah. then it actually becomes, like, the solution. Mm-hmm. Because I, I saw it with myself. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I never thought of myself as someone who shops, like, who enjoys shopping online. Yeah, right? Me neither. Yeah. Me neither. But I'll cop, like, a sneaker, like, for example, mm. like, a show, like, a Doc Martin, for example, online, because I trust that. Right? But anything else, for example, I'm not really giving out my card details. Mm. But if I can DM you, and if you can respond quickly, and if you can give me your banking details, yes, and if yes. you can send it via Aramex, like, I'm your guy. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it's cool to see, like, just how that's really like the avenue which having an online thrift store like goes for which is dope yeah it is very personal yeah Yeah. more than anything explain how the the bidding works because yeah because i went through like i was doing my research of course Mm -hmm. like going through your page and stuff and then i see for example how hot like the comments can get like especially when it's a fire piece yeah like Um, it happens a lot with cameras with film cameras yeah people people, like still they want film cameras um and i've been lucky enough in the past to saw some yeah. like a few at one time which was oh it was a blessing i wish i i wish that happened every time i went sourcing yeah. but it, it's just it's whether you it's w- whether you get lucky or not i feel you um but yeah when it's a, a piece like that when it isn't sometimes it happens with a piece of clothing mm. but if it's a camera like you don't have to it, it doesn't have to be your size yeah. you know um and i know that a lot of people are going to want it because like using film cameras have become really popular lately yeah um so you'd make it a bidding item so you'd you'd start the price at let's say 150 rand mm. and you'd say um so if, if no one bids and then like so wait let me just think yeah so i would cool. say if it's if i posted at six oh i would yeah. say okay at nine o'clock the bidding closes cool. if no one bids and the price is at 150 at half past nine if someone says i want the camera they pay 150 rand cool. but now let's say they've been like 15 people interested yeah. they can go in the comments and then which they can tends to be the case yes yours. yeah <laughs> like, yeah. Tends to be the case yeah. Yours. um and then they can go into the comments and bird in increments of like 10 rand 20 rand cool and Is sometimes it it's gotten it's gotten too much and i was like okay please let's, let's <laughs> stop it i can imagine let's just stop like it gets intense but i really want a piece i'm fighting yeah. someone for that piece. like i remember I had one camera and this girl wanted it so badly. She was bidding against herself. Like she was saying, okay, 220. No way, 250. No way, 280. I was like, you're okay. okay. Like, like no one else oh is, yeah. no one's competing. You're just, Yo, that's actually you're just so throwing weird. more money at it. Like, So wait, she was actually bidding against yes, herself. Yes, yes. She I wanted swear, to make, she wanted to really, really she get really the wanted, point across yeah. that it's hers. Yeah. And it also helps to have a buyout. Yeah. So if, if it's like, at like What's 400. So, um, 
instead of going through the whole process, if someone sees the camera and mm. then they see the price starts at 150, the buyout is 400. Instead of bidding and they and they're able to pay 400, they say, okay, buy out, and then they pay me 400 for it. What if someone else also wants to buy out? Well, it depends on who's first. <laughs> oh, shit. Wait. Yeah, it depends on who, who oh, comments yeah. or DMs me first. Okay, cool. It's always first come, first serve. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, would you ever, like, opt, so would you say, for example, before, okay, cool, I have this vintage pair of, I don't know, Ivisu jeans, I don't know, whatever yeah. it is, and would you say then, for example, okay, cool, um, bidding starts at, let's say, 300, um, buy out is 600. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, two people, yeah. Um, both really want those those jeans. Yeah. And they like they, it's a vintage pair of V of yeah. course. And they're both willing to to buy it out. Mm -hmm. Then how would that work? Would one say DM, okay, cool, I'm willing to buy it out six hundred. Yeah. And if someone thirty seconds comes in later and it's like, Okay, cool, I also want to they buy it. Out. Then they second in line. Ah shit. Like, okay, cool. No, I don't think you understand, you right? It. Like it gets it it comes down to the second. Yeah. Like it'll be nine seconds after I post, and then You're twelve seconds. Twelve like, seconds yeah. after I post, it's whoever commented first. Oh, yeah. And I mean, like the proof is right there. Like, yeah. it's like I can see it. So My thing is, it's like it's probably so. Um, like, just let's say, for example, getting let's say, for example, being a fan of like your page mm. and getting a lot of stuff from your page. I'm sure it's probably for them quite like addictive. I'm sure they would set the alerts on and stuff like cool. that mm -hmm. to yeah. make sure post that, notifications like, on post notifications. Yeah, like they are, there's there's a certain a certain amount of customers. Mm -hmm. um, a certain number of customers who always buy from me. Like, yeah. always. Like, yeah. I can name them, like, right now, but I, I won't, I won't. But, like, <laughs> they, no, like, they always buy from me. And, yeah. yo, I don't, like, I don't think they understand how much it means. I feel you. And, you know, you have to throw in some freebies there, too. Yeah. Like, you, you have to thank them. You have to that's give them essential. something. Yeah. Client service and customer yeah. service inside of a business, I believe. Yeah, that's why, I, that's why I love this so much, because it's yeah. so personal. Like, it's me who I live in like two suburbs away from you yeah. and I'm and I'm selling you something and yeah. I like I have the ability you have the ability to come to me and be like look I really really want this is it okay if I pay half now half later is it okay if I if I pay like if I lay by it kind of thing yeah. like I'm I'm a, I'm a human too like yeah. I understand I I go through the same struggles like yeah. it literally happened to me last night where I wanted to buy something yeah um but yeah I had to I, I had to you. have some self control. Of it. But anyways, <laughs> um, but I like it's it's personal. Yeah, and that's the, like it's the, it's my favorite part about it. Yeah, I think now it kind of really answers b because I, I I had one one question I think when I when, when I sent it to you it was really like kind of like about like the the way you select the pieces, mm. not really what sourcing is now, but essentially like my comment on how you source because it's like the pieces which you source, right? And I can say this from a personal experience purely because I want them for myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like, I, I, I don't care, for example, I shop if it's men, I shop if it's women. Mm -hmm. So I, I see, for example, the way that it's kind of always within that, that thin line, it's kind of like... I don't know if you wanted to feel like Freddie Mercury, for example, mm. like one day you'd be able to go to your page, for example, mm. as a gent and, you know, find something. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's yeah. And I, I, I like that personally mm. purely because it's like it's not really gender conforming yeah. per se. Um, and it's also like it allows a lot of room and flexibility for mm -hmm. someone to really express themselves buying yourself. And it's also like, again, all well priced. Yeah. So you could really like find a fit there, like for real, for real. Yeah. Unlike a budget. Thank you. Which is dope. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Cool. So I think now let's speak about. You said you also do film cameras. I mm. saw you do books as well. I do books. Yeah. Um, books were a request, and I was so keen because yeah. there's a shop that's down the road from me that has some really cool books. Mm. Um, it's just that the hype was like really like exponential, and then it just died down completely. Oh yeah. And I I struggled to sell the books, and I had to like lower the prices to like twenty bucks a yeah. book. Yeah. And no one was like I still have some sitting in my cupboard at home that no yeah. one wants. Yeah. So that's like it just depends on how it's obviously like you live and you learn. If mm. I buy some books and then and they all sell out, that's great. I'm gonna buy some more. Yeah. But until like when that stops, then it's gonna stop until until someone requests it Bad. again. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think more than anything, it's, it's rare to find any online thrift store which even sells books. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's what was like a very like pleasant surprise yeah. when I was scrolling like more down mm. through your your feed. And also like the were well, those books requested essentially like that specific one because I was gonna. No. Oh, no. so you just were like okay, yeah. cool. I feel as if that would I was be like, a oh, these, these are these are some classics. Let me let me get some. Yo, you picked some very good classics. <laughs> I was about to say, Thank I was you. like, yo, Thank like, did someone re specifically request these books, mm. or were you like, nah? I think that's a fire one. I think that's mm. fire one. Let me yeah. pick that one. Mm. All right, cool. Um, and then 
let's maybe chat now a bit about so we've spoken a bit about the business element mm. um how how does it feel for you being an entrepreneur so young like has it or have you always felt like an entrepreneur um, um or yeah just no actually i like it's yeah. it's only ever since my business only yeah. like before that i never thought that i could like still now um my boyfriend or my friends would be like yeah like i'd be like yo what am i doing with my life like oh my word yeah and then they're like you know you own a business and i'm like oh yeah flip i do <laughs> no i do Same. like it's just it's a it's weird looking at it like that because it's especially because it's thrifting it's it's one of my favorite hobbies yeah so i'm doing what i enjoy like i enjoy like every time like i'm like oh i want to go thrifting today oh flip no wait i have an assignment let me go tomorrow rather it's yeah. more like it's that like i enjoy it so yeah yeah it's, I'm just I'm really lucky that I've been able to find a hobby and a source of income at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I honestly have and and again like that's really a testament to anyone who kind of like goes into entrepreneurship and really kind of like really figures it out. And it takes longer for some. I know for me, for example, it wasn't like immediate. Mm-hmm. Um, it took me some time. It took mm-hmm. me trying out a couple of different things. But eventually, when I found my footing in fashion, sp- the media the media side of it specifically, I kind of like ran with that mm. um and with with that how far do you want to take it you know what i'm saying like because now you're you're in you're in school so mm. right so of course you're gonna graduate and then of course you're gonna be like okay cool that's the that's the possible yeah. path um and then of course there's like this online thrift store which is in the, in the opposite direction yeah, it is. you know what i'm saying so like what are you what is your thinking in terms of um how far you want to take um, can I say APT? APT, oh, yeah. Right. APT. I'm going to be honest with you. I really don't know, eh? Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm, I think the best thing for me to do is play it by ear because you never know what's going to happen. You don't. Um, uh, like, my studies obviously come first. Mm. And if, thank God, like, my business hasn't gotten in the way of that, it's been it's been difficult for me to balance that. But, yeah. I have, but I've, like, f- I've, I've been able to. Um, but, yeah, I think as long as it stays my interest and as long as... I, I think it's something that I'm going to enjoy for a while. So hopefully yeah. it lasts long. Yeah. And hopefully it goes on for a few more years. I mean, like, to be fair, I feel as if it was there even before you started the mm. actual business. I feel as if, like, you probably have been wanting or been into, like, you know, like, mm. thrifting, essentially, yeah. and, you know, buying secondhand. Yeah. So you've probably, like, low-key, subliminally been wanting mm. to do this. Yeah. Um, and I think, like, when I'm living on my own and stuff, yeah. having the source of income has been, like, a blessing, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Like, it's been, like, not only for me, but also for my family. Like, yeah. just with small things. And I didn't realize that up until, like, this year. Mm. But also, like, yo, my business isn't even a year old yet. Mm. Which is crazy, because I feel like I've been doing this for so long. Yeah. But, yeah, it's it's been fun. Where do you feel like your optimism comes from? Because I feel like you're such a... Um, um, and it's, it's 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 super dope and inspirational to see, because I feel as if you're the kind of person who takes matters into their own hands. I'm very like on the go, kind of like you probably initiate things yourself. You probably don't need to wait for other people before you can get like something done. So where does it come from? Like, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> and I think this is probably even one like I kind of really thought about now because um, I know that I'm, I'm also like a, a self-motivated mm. person, but I know like where that comes from and why that's the case. There's a lot of good and a lot of bad mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. A lot of good traits, a lot of bad traits. Mm. So see, seeing like that, like for me, I'm just, I'm wondering like, um, like why would you, why would you, how would you at- attribute though, like your motivatedness? Like how your go, your... Like what motivates me? Yeah, your go getting at nature. Like why? Mm. I think I... I don't know. It's not that I have a fear of just like being very, what's it, what's the word like static? Is it static or yeah. just like like yeah. very still and like Definitely not doing static. anything? Yeah. Um. I like I like being on the move and I like yeah. doing things. Like I like things in general. Yeah. I love things. Gotcha. But um, I think it's just it's been like it's a very personal kind of thing. Yeah. You know, like why one like why I do certain things. Mm. It's a very deep question. <laughs> um, I must say it's a very really deep question. Yeah. Um but yeah, and ooh, I, you got me thinking now, <laughs> damn. I get you though. And I, I and I yeah. And I, I honestly I, I feel as if like it because I mean it, it is a deep question, you know. I and think being being dependent on myself yeah. as a student, being dependent on myself, like, you know, not ha- like just the little things like not having to ask my parents for money anymore. Yeah. Like when I go out, like that yeah. kind of thing. It's 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 liberating. It's just a little bit of of 
why I do what I do. Mm. And it's that that also motivates me being yeah. able to rely on myself for those small things. Obviously, I can't rely on my on this business to like pay my rent. Yeah. Hopefully, if it grows enough, maybe I I I, 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 pay, <laughs> so I, Yo, I see I, I see that happen. <laughs> yeah. so I'm not um, sure how you don't see that. I see it for sure. But yeah, just <laughs> obviously like I live with him now, so I'm not yeah. having to have those expenses. Uh-huh. But um yeah, just the small things I get me going. And um what would you then kind of like kind more more than anything if you're maybe speaking to someone who is more of like in a similar situation mm. to you, mm. right? In terms of maybe like studying um, and also, um, let's say, pushing their business at the same yeah. time. What would you say would be, not really advice per se, mm. but kind of like the things that maybe you'd relay, things that maybe mm. you've learned, yeah. like hard lessons. Uh, or, I think yeah. it's important for you to know your priorities yeah. And I think it's important for you to, if you need to take a break, take a break. Like, um, I find that it's easy to, you know, start. A, it's easy to start a business, but it's maintaining it that's the most important thing. Yeah. And this pressure of constantly need to be needing to be doing something and yeah. needing to be like focusing on your business and then focusing on your studies and you know your your home situation. It's just yeah. every every aspect of life. Yeah. I think. It's okay for you to take a break, yeah. but it's also like just yeah, like know your priorities yeah. and just like live by that mm. and whatever you're feeling inside, just stay true to that, yeah. you know. And oh, originality as well. Yeah, like within your business and do what you want to do. Yeah, like take inspiration from other people, but make it your own. Like do what you want to do and and make sure that it's your like from your authentic self yeah. and channel that in your business because that is what's going to sh- like make your business successful 100%. and make you make you feel better about yourself. Yeah. And I uh, me ha- seeing everything that you've mentioned right now, mm-hmm. seeing that directly kind of through let's say your business <laughs> and kind of like just in the <laughs> short span of time me just maybe seeing what I've seen from the side yeah. um or just maybe seeing for example just how your business works maybe chatting to you mm-hmm. it's so crazy like how you're also an embodiment of everything that you're kind of saying that people maybe should 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 think so it's kind of really like a learned probably learned lessons hard <laughs> lessons you've had to go through to kind of like realize those mm-hmm. things yeah um but i think everything you've said is actually quite fundamental and quite important okay. um and yeah I do like I just really want to thank you first of all for pulling up it's, um, a su- it's, such, a, it's such a pleasure <laughs> yeah honestly. like it's it's so dope to have um just people who are kind of like at the epicenter of what's mm-hmm. happening and what's going on like here at the like in our space and being able to convey those messages across to yeah. our audience mm-hmm. um because we also want to grow this audience we also want to get to a point where we're attracting people who also kind of like are living embodiments, like I've said, of what yeah. they do and their businesses yeah. are. So, thanks for taking your time out on a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> it's my pleasure. <laughs> to come visit us. And yeah, like, we just wish you the best Thank with you APT. So much. Thank you. <laughs> um, I only see amazing and greater things happening. Thank you. Um, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thanks everyone for joining and we will see you for the next episode of the Front Row Media Podcast.